Yep, we got you. I kind of like lag out between accepting and everything. Well, I'm just been vibing. Oh, okay. I leave. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just a vibey day. It's a. It's been a vibey day. I can't lie. I'm um, feeling better. Been sick for a week now, but I'm feeling better. And uh, Jesus, do you get the booster? Dude, I don't know. No, no, I don't think it's COVID because I did two different tests and they came out negative. But like, I have been sniffling and coughing and all the the fun stuff. But like, mm. I've been so better. You, you got like, you got the gross stuff or kind of positive. Yeah, <laughs> like the lay in bed and just kind of vibe out there, kind of stuff. Wow, it's cool mm-hmm. to see all the homies pop in real quick. Thank you guys. Hi. All right, give it. We we'll give it two more minutes and then I am going to. Uh, I think we should probably get this started. I don't care. We could start whenever. I'll open up to the homies. You want to open up to the homies? Do the homies have any questions? I, I mean, I did just... <laughs> I saw the Purple Rat uh, edition that you just did. That was... He's doing everything but solving cases. That's so crazy. No, no, no. He's getting... Re- he's he, That's like in between cases and like after cases and before cases. And, and it's actually the case, too. He's going undercover, but he's also... Going under, he's going undercover? Thinks... Yes. 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 I'm getting confirmation mm-hmm. now through the Purple Hearts that he is, in fact, going undercover. In shorts and a long sleeve, no well, bulletproof vest. Can't stick no out. No, yeah. Well, that's well in the Fediverse. Um, see, okay. So there's been a lot of generations of Fedas, and we've seen him quilted in the past, and now he's just yes, completely true. solidified. So I don't even think he needs it. <laughs> <laughs> just literally leveled up. He's now he went from being quilted to just fucking like tight him. Yeah, I think he reached a certain level of vibe where you know it's just any it just ailments or wrong. Yeah. yeah, it just bounces out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about character growth. Oh. No, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good, but we'll see uh, some more adventure. I don't know. I was excited to draw some poses. At first, I drew him running, and then I was like, wait, Feta doesn't just run. He vibes, so then I drew him he dancing like, with... Yeah, he doesn't run. He just dances <laughs> places. Ooh, yeah, hopefully. Um, I'll wait for confirmation on that, but... No, yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting thread so far, seeing people pop in for that, and it's kind of a nice way for me to just not take on like work i'm stressed about and just like draw for fun and in a way kind of maybe start some more light-hearted conversations on the timeline um because i feel like everyone's sure. shelled in oh 100 percent. i definitely feel like uh uh people kind of have that like air of professionalism that you know kind of gets in the way of having organic conversations so like i really like like what you did with this right because it kind of like you know, genuine interactions, not just like, hey, I'll show this if you show me. Right, right. And it's like, it's not, it's not meant at work. It's not anything really other than just for fun. And, um, yeah, I'm not the first one to do it either. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's cool. It's fun. Highly recommend if you're the type for that. Um, I just feel like, like, to get into that shelled up thing, but, like, not to get too deep too quick, but, like, I feel like there was a point where people just started joining group chats. And so, like, all the tomfoolery of the timeline just went behind covers and if you're not in the right group chats you're not really around the fun i don't know yo that's so real that is unbelievably real it's like i feel like when nfts hit like we definitely lost a lot of the organic stuff it really came down uh whether or not you were i guess talking to the right people or at least associated with and yeah, I'm not gonna get some advice. No, no I feel that. Recorded, but, but like, I gotta. I'll take on the. I'll take on the the the, the weight of the you... realness. Um, no, it's because okay. it's super true. Like, it's just like it... if you're not associated deeply in the sense where you're in the group chats, like you can get left out of the loop a lot. And um, I'm not in a lot. I'm only in two. But I see that there's people who will hang around group chats as like it's a god-given privilege to have them around just doing nothing other than throwing in like their sales and threads so like i don't know that's my comment on the whole ordeal which also kind of encompasses a little bit of my shtick with the space but yeah we'll yeah, start light we'll start light yeah start, start light. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just some icebreakers no yeah no yeah. i definitely feel you it's it's gotten a little bit almost performative but mm. you know what can yeah. you do i know it, I know it's it was never people like to talk the whole new paradigm stuff and this is like a like it's not like the trad to the trad markets but really ultimately it, it is it comes down to who you know rather than I guess we're figuring it out too the whole like way of like trustless I don't know or like I don't even know I'm not I'm not gonna just act like I'm deep enough to understand this shit but I just feel like 
we're 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 definitely migrating towards the positive side of things. We just got yeah. Web three ideals in a Web two environment, or it's just like practicing Web three ideals isn't really natural yet in terms of like it's all of us stiff, coming up together. Yeah, 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 and yeah. like at the at the end of the day, like artists before everything were unhinged as fuck. Like I don't know, if <laughs> right. you're, like here for like the 2015 2016 eras but like that was messy every day was something else but anyway yeah i got like no you're good this kind of segues into like how i kind of started posting art online but because um 2016 was when i started with subtle bubble but it was on instagram and just the vibe there is completely different but um, I didn't necessarily know too much about art twitter at that point so i was just kind of posting daily drawings then and um yeah, it's definitely different now um, being here on Twitter. But honestly, like I say that about the group chat thing, but it, it allows for a different level of connection and like personal uh, just familiarity with one another. So I, I vibe yeah, here. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like it's like um, because like on Instagram you get like you know this is this is my range. This is me. You get the caption or a think piece, and instead on here you get the you get the art sure, but you also get to hear like the artist like unhinged. 2 a.m. thoughts right? <laughs> yeah yeah and that is a whole world of in itself because like kind of shows a different personality to the artist and uh can be positive can be negative but it's definitely a thing mm-hmm. 100 yeah. percent. all right well that was actually a smooth kind of segue you kind of leveraged there i, I appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> yeah no problem Just so you say you started as a uh, subtle bubble as be uh, around 2016 um how did that really like come to come to fruition was that just kind of like a like a, i'm gonna post my drawings under this one thing and then right we're gonna uh, uh, it just kind of snowballed or like what was the what was the little backstory um it's definitely a, a, a lot of dots connecting at one point in terms of like the name subtle bubble and why i wanted to post online and even like what i saw it doing for me in the future um as for like a little bit of the backstory on that i was um, at the second high school I went to, I went to three total, but in the second one, I was kind of yearning to connect back with some old friends in a way, and art was always like a way I connected with people and just art sharing, so it just made sense for me to open up an online page, and at the time, I was playing video games under the name Bubble Bus, um, and that's a uh, Spongebob reference my friend Bubble made. Bubble Bus? Yeah, like my, friend, like my friend and I from high school were painting a fence in the middle of summer and after a few hours in the sun and with some paint around, he was already a zany character, but he just started like going off the walls and he was just like, hub dub dub, hop on the Bubble Bus and that just like stuck as a joke and so I used it as like my game name and then um, when I was in that second high school, just like thinking of like, what could I, I don't want to go by Victor Perez, like my name, who I am. I just like want to have fun and do something random. And I don't want it to be something that I regret, like something that could be controversial. And I like bubbles, uh, subtle yeah. bubbles sounded interesting. And it just kind of was what I named it. Like it really didn't have a deep meaning. It just was like, I don't know. I didn't want to go by the game like name. Something like with the positive memory and uncancelable, uncancelable, and uncancelable, and open for interpretation. I think like it's pretty true. vague. Like I've, it, I don't know. I've like had some plastic, different. It's like the plastic bag in the wind, American Beauty kind of. Mm. I can't, I can't do. No, that. no, I could see it. I, I, yeah, it's like the um, depending on your mindset, you see the bubbles in a different way. Like it's something that we've all have have passed by um and and like just in naming my i think okay let me get my thoughts together i think as a general rule of thumb i traverse through a state of generalizations and vague suggestions when it comes to world building Mm. um and subtle bubble has taken on a lot of different meanings throughout the years and also has like shaped how i kind of see subtle bubble and bubbles and sb and all this type of stuff so like I've come up with random little bubble philosophies along the way, such as like bubble philosophies. Let's yes, get into yes, it. yes. Let's get into it. So here's one: pressure makes diamonds, but carefulness will create a bigger bubble. That's just the truth. If you if you gently blow into a bubble, it'll make it b- bigger than if you were to crush it with a deep breath. Um, That's true. Although That's unnoticeable true. at first, if you were to glance at a bubble, it immediately warps the environment around it. I think that's one of the things yeah. where I kind of carry within myself where like, you don't need to see me screaming off the top of the mountain, but if you pass by me in real life, I hope I can change your perspective on a couple of things at least by just like slightly warping, you know? 
that's that's bonkers. It's deep as hell. No, I <laughs> that heavily. And then it, um, it's true. Like you're really, you're really. Like, this is really a lifestyle for you. Yeah, I mean, um, okay. So one more thing before I dive into that, because I guess it really has become like a lifestyle slash, like personal identity thing. Because um, like with Subtle Bubble, one more thing that I want to mention is like. To sign my name more recently it's evolved to where like i can sign my art with a bubble and that really excites me because like i don't need to put a name or anything i can just put a bubble and if i put a really minimalistic bubble on a piece of like a piece of art and people start associating that with me soon enough those just associate circles with me and if i can get people to like associate such a fundamental shape with my art i feel like that's kind of broken um that is like, <laughs> that's like some 40 chest shit like that, that's bad as fuck <laughs> Um, no, that's really but, cool because like that, that's like half of like what you know the battle of being an artist is it's trying to get people to identify if they can look at something and be like okay this is x person uh okay we're looking somewhere else this is it's very discernible like no has got purple reds uh swiss has her clouds cliff's got goobers all that all that stuff you know right. like just being able to like kind of get that, that like one identifiable quality and i feel like for me, I, I hyper-focus into different, like, concentrations and interests to the point where, like, I felt that my online presence was hard to follow. And, like, for other people, they can obviously tell, like, it's my art. But, like, from the inside, I just feel like I wasn't organized enough. So it became, like, a way to organize as well because as long as it had the bubble, like, it was a peace of mind. So, like, I didn't worry if I was doing animation or painting or 3D or whatever. Like, it just The bubble worked. was still there. Like right. throughout, the, throughout the different mediums, that's a really good way to uh, kind of claim it as yours, I guess, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, I I think it evolves, and I hope it continues to evolve. Um, in like my big dream, like blue sky dream kind of world. Um, eventually, I have something called like the bubble, and it's some form of art residency program. Um, and that's a whole that would like, be cool. Thing, we can get, but we can get into it if you want. That's you can like, get into it. Let's get into it. Why not? All right, let's get into it. Because let's get into it. Because I feel like, uh, obviously we're early, um, and obviously like we're in a dreamer stage of just ideal, like you know, idealized worlds and all that. But yeah. like in my ideal world, artists don't need to go to school. Like university, art university is a thing of the past. Like we do <laughs> not have colleges for art. We have ateliers, like resurgence, and we have like artists come together under mentors in the. Um, re- like in the discipline that they're interested in and they can work with these mentors on projects like legitimate projects that are then you know funding their stay at the residency and mm-hmm. um, with crypto and like everything that we're doing I think it allows for um, that to be automated and, and like divided in a way where it's just like carefree good living I don't know I like I said like this is my big dream kind of thing it's I like, haven't necessarily like, worked like, out the like logistics the, but <laughs> like the commune kind of thing no, right. I definitely, I definitely kind of see what you're saying. Like with X, I think I just talked about like bringing back uh, atliers or what? What are they called? Is that what called? Yeah. Is that really man? No, um, I don't know if that's the front. It's, it's probably. It sounds right. It sounds okay. right, but I don't know enough okay. to go against it. But no, like it's yeah. it's a uh, it's a really good point, and I honestly think it'd be incredibly beneficial as uh, as and for artists, and I firmly believe like whoever can actually successfully pull it off for it, that it's going to be because i think it's not even about first i think it's just about like best, best right yeah, yeah. i think that's something people forget about in this space at the speed that it goes like it's okay to take two weeks rather than one week to like really make it good because it's not about like just grabbing attention it's about like longevity and retaining it so uh mm-hmm. yeah well, i think it's a, it's a good message like across like any sort of uh brand or company or whatever because like it's not about who does it first it's about who do it best like zoom right. eight skype like at the at the end of the day just shit like that right 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 amen yeah true um 100 percent wait uh what was it? but um yeah so i want to start a cult I um i want to <laughs> what else <laughs> uh, that's cool i, I could fuck with that just, i want to make like a bubble. I want to make like inventions too, like SB inventions, just like little that trinkets and gadgets for the daily life of. So when you and, so when you anyone. say like inventions, like are you talking about like practical stuff, or is this just just like world building stuff, or like I'm just thinking, doing it for the sake of doing? It? I'm thinking a little bit of everything, but no, more like practical stuff as well as like big picture things. Like 
um like okay this is getting a little bit into my backstory but like when i thought i would have to not go an art route i was like oh i'll go into engineering or something i like how things work but then like i realized i could just be an animator and then draw those things and then someone else can figure out the math and make it happen you know like i just need to have the idea and visualize it and communicate it so like a subtle bubble like thing like i'd probably like i don't know okay i don't have any of my daily day gadgets off the tongue because i wasn't thinking about it but like the big picture invention i always think about is just some kind of way to repurpose plastics of recyclable materials into 3d printers so that it's functionally compatible because then people would actually recycle for their selfish needs rather than for the sake of the earth and we would have cool little gadget thingies like you could just keep gallons and print out a desk who knows i didn't like that would definitely be cool because i mean like you're right there if it's an altruistic and like people are less likely to do it but if it benefits them personally it's like 100 more likely that would be cool as fuck i like imagine 10 years 10 years and we see this happen you're gonna record this and be like yo hold up (laughs) no i don't even know but like the uh, it's like i'm not super precious of my ideas so i just put it out there like i know this is a recorded space so like i keep my fingers crossed someone actually hears it and develops it because like no, um, you know, good I'd rather draw silly hats and ghouls if I'm being honest. <laughs> Real as hell. You actually brought up the one of the next things I was gonna talk about. Um, ghouls. Let's talk about ghouls. Let's talk about ghouls, man. Let's talk about ghouls. Big ghoul fan. Big ghoul maxi. Joe, can you uh, <laughs> pin a couple uh, uh, ghoul-related tweets up? I'll pin two. Um. Oh yeah, cool. I pre. I basically work. Yeah, no, I, I should have prepped and. Not. You're good. You're good. I appreciate you giving me the space to talk. With a lot of love. But yeah. So, so let me. I think me... this is. Sorry, oh. I'm just gonna. You go ahead, please. I'm just gonna praise it a little bit. You know what it oh, is. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Really? No, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> uh, I thought Ghouls is one of the like most like creative, like continuous projects that I've seen. Um, like each character has like the same kind of. Um, you can tell they belong in a series, but they're also so different. From each other that it's like hey what am i gonna what am i gonna see next week or what am i gonna see the next drop what am i gonna see it it really gives me like reminiscent of like early 90s like video game stuff like with the weird mm-hmm. like boxes and uh yeah let's just like what was your inspiration behind that and like yeah, that means just first off that means the world to me um uh, thank you for saying that like you have it, i feel seen <laughs> i see you i hear you um but yeah okay so inspiration um is Definitely. Okay, I'm gonna. I might ramble for a minute. So when I was, so when I was little, uh, I bounced between my grandpa, uh, my grandma's houses. Um, when I was just a little lad, um, in my grandma on my mom's side, I would hang out with my cousin and watch him play video games. And on my grandma on my dad's side, I would just watch VHSs and cartoons of like Pink Panther and stuff like that. But on my mom's side um, is when I would get excited because my cousin would always get new games. So I would watch him play through like everything. And if it was like a two player game, like Ice Climbers or something like that, I would jump into it. And so old video games definitely played a big influence into my upbringing. And like after I wanted to be an astronaut, I wanted to be a game designer. And I feel like I wanted to be that for a while until I just saw how much it actually was. And I still like, or like how much work and like non artwork is actually is, but like, it is something I would love to overlook one day. And I do have game ideas, but um, this collection has been a way for me to kind of scratch that itch and express that side of myself while having like something that I feel is very true to me. And um, I'm proud to like have his personal image because big thing in this space um that I was lack I felt like I was lacking um which I started to find a little bit in the bubble which we talked about earlier like just signing my name with bubble and adding cohesion in that way but a big thing I was I felt like I was lacking was like something that was me like something people could point yeah. back to because like I have collections that have like sold and stuff but it's enough I don't think they're like anything that people are going to call iconic or whatever it's like my sketchbook collection and my one on ones and whatever was- I enjoy well, I, the comic collections, but I, I definitely see what you mean. Like, it's hard to I, really yeah. like, bring that back to your, like, you, like, point to right. to you. Um, yeah. Um, but, like, I do have goals in developing so that my comics have weight to them. Um, like, 
and by that I just mean I'm working on short films that will incorporate that kind of style and be like vignettes of daily life and I think that will bring more attention to the comics because then they could be looked at as like the stills version of my short films which like that's the whole thing about this space is that I like have been just thinking about uh, compulsively is like this need to associate slash like create um context like if you don't have that it's hard to keep track of what you're doing and where you're going so like for me ghouls felt like the first kind of instance where i had a context for a collection that i was like very uh just connected with and felt like it was an extension of myself um between the goofy titles to the ghouls to their like random designs and their character descriptions like i felt like i was connecting all the different stuff that i was um, developing in the space between my comics and my one-on-ones and whatever and then um, after my Miami trip or like Miami Baz- Art Basel whatever last year um, this drawing came up this one that I pinned up at the top and I made that background and it reminded me a lot of like the old Zelda dungeons I would watch my cousin play and stuff and I wanted to make this into like a short collection so I made another background similarly inspired which was just all squares And while, like, trying to kind of freeform some type of abstract shape, I ended up making what became the Gabagool, like, the first one. And I just, like, it just clicked, like, in terms of it feeling like something I could build on and something that I could look back on when it's done. Because I've done a lot, but I feel like they're all just kind of gone with the wind until I'm, like, actually relevant enough to be, like, looked into. But as someone trying to build my name, like... No one gives a fuck if we're being honest. No, yeah, you definitely like that's one thing I've I've noticed and like especially um because I think you're definitely uh one of the few who just likes to jump between mediums a lot and uh and just kind of like experiment all that fun stuff. Um, it's really hard to build something cons- consistent and coherent if you're just constantly all over the place. It's an upwards battle, but uh, I think you really kind of nailed it with the ghouls. Like it's definitely arcade vibes it's and it's like hearing that it's like kind of like it really has that backstory like that just makes it hit like 20 times harder yeah and and like a tad bit more to that story is like obviously uh well i I guess not obviously but i will come clear that i love always sunny in philadelphia so charlie kelly screaming out ghouls was a big (laughs) influence (laughs) just for the fact that right just fucking ghouls i don't know they're ghouls and like i want to be able to just say that like in public like so what are you working on oh i got some ghouls (laughs) (laughs) not did not seem like a complete lunatic (laughs) just just little green ghouls man just just little ghouls I got gaba ghoul, yaba daba ghoul, metaphysical. <laughs> like, I got ghouls. What do you mean? Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the life ghoul. I'm trying to build. Shout forbidden ghoul. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm not. Yeah, we shouldn't bring that up. We, should we shouldn't tease the up. people I'm like that. Stern, I'm going to get a stern talking. But I'm going to segue away from that because I'm scared Noel is going to attack me. Yeah, maybe yeah that, let's, let's, but... let's keep it pushing. Let's keep it pushing. <laughs> yeah, let's keep it pushing. But um, ghouls has really served as like a great narrative device for myself in mm, it, just exploring just fictitious worlds and, and also kind of like collectibles and collection like premises and setups because that's not something I really considered much. I was kind of on my high horse like I'm an artist, I'm not a collectible and then I realized Aww. people don't care about that and so I just embodied it. I'm like no, you know what? I am a collection and then I just kind of realized I can do some cool stuff with that. Um like so when I released huh? wait what was that? Just, I... <laughs> just the sorry, just talking about the collectible versus the artist and then realizing that Oh no, I, I know it's a sort of, yeah, it's a touchy subject. We can get into it real quick, but um just now like something because like so we can keep it pushing while also mentioning it here like i I got a compromise real quick like i think this collectible series has given me an ability or given me a chance to like creatively express myself through how i release obviously like it hasn't been too dramatic yet i've only been dropping five editions at five tes but i feel like that's true to myself because i make myself accessible and i really am just here to try to like connect people and find cool people and i feel like ghouls is a great little bait on the hook for people to like approach and not really like go broke over trying to just i don't know anyways it's just a thing it's, right it's, it's just a nice little thing. entry point for people who want to get involved into something that's going to be releasing every every so often at a consistent yeah day, and it's not going to be breaking the bank it's not going to be breaking the bank they're not going to be worried about it if they yeah. like it they might reach out for it if they don't like it they'll probably wait for the next one it's cool i don't mind that we all have favorites it's just like 
it gives me like a solid project to have my bubble float across. And uh, when I uh, like crossed it over to Ethereum, um, it like gave me an actual like payoff to the momentum of Tezos because the 101 that sold on Ethereum like sold for more than the entirety of the ghouls collection on Tez. So I felt like I was just gaining momentum, t- building up talk. And then like that was an instance of where I was able to like get a little bit more return on my efforts. And, and um, on top of this, like I'm not just leaving the ETH like as like a second collection that I'm going to be releasing more like ETH ghouls on. Cause I don't want to just tack on things to ghouls. I want to be like intentional with it. So this one of one, this is kind of alpha. Um, not in the sense of like, oh my god, it's going to be worth a lot, but just like, I haven't shared this with people, um, except only to Joven because we talk about stuff, but um, this one of one is going to evolve, and when it does so, it Ooh. is going to bring more of ghouls and more of the ghoul lore with it. Like, if you go into the properties and metadata, you see a brief description of the ghoul's conjurer's like, escape and him equipping his net Ooh. and leaving, and you see the properties of like his mount is the gabagool, his weapon is the net, his armor is nothing, he's literally naked. But when he returns, what will he be wearing? What is he going to be equipped with and what is he riding? Is he going to be dragging treasure behind him? So these are like things I want to explore um, in just updating the metadata because then it essentially becomes an access token because when it evolves, this is like drum roll moment, when it evolves, I plan on dropping a new collection on Ethereum where it'll be like a low edition of this initial image. But one of the additions will be gifted to the owner of the 101. So he can just hold that 101 and keep gaining these additions as I also like spread them to more people because really I'm just trying to create an accessible collection with cool ghoul art that is maybe whimsical, maybe lighthearted, maybe makes you chuckle or think of some other nostalgic feeling it's enjoyable like i appreciate it like you look at it and it's enjoyable i think that's really cool like what you're doing with uh our metadata and stuff because like personally big lore fan here big lord nerd and we love the lore rpg we love the lore lore. (laughs) um so it's like really cool just to see like that uh kind of backstory fleshed out like that it really gets you like on them right Um, and i just hope it kind of maybe gets other people kind of thinking of like hold up like I can update the metadata and like people aren't necessarily buying an art piece. They're buying a token, which could evolve into other art pieces. And I know that's something yeah. that's been expressed with like the deep thinking pox of the space and whatever, but like on a more ground artist level, like I feel like we still can push the barrier, like, and we can still push the, the, sure. the boundaries for sure. Um, like, so... you're, definitely, you're definitely right. Like, I mean, you're always going to have like some of the threat or is just, writing shit about like how it can but it's would be it's gonna be really interesting watching like some watching how some of uh uh like collections like yours and you know people who follow after they kind of flesh that out and use the tech to kind of further the experience 100 yeah it's like uh just as we realize the extent of which selling an nft differs from selling a physical piece of art and explore that boundary like uh it's it's exciting and it's room for exciting stuff but i think like i said earlier like that need for context is huge because you can just drop something that is innovative but if it's just like a standalone thing like it's hard to be recognized like sam definitely did that recently uh with the with their statue and i'm glad to see that because that was really an iconic piece but you see like artists experiment to no success on a daily basis and it can be really just exhausting it can be a little yeah it's like a little it can definitely be a little bit demoralizing it kind of feels you like you're screaming out into the void but yeah. you know it's it's one of the harsh truths it's like you can make beautiful one-of-ones but chances are if you're not popping they're not going they're not going to be recognized you need to right. get something where the people feel like they're a part of it that they they belong that kind of you know sense of you hit that sense of identity or that sense of nostalgia or whatever that's hidden for them 100 percent right? No, 100%. And like to bounce off that, like with another harsh truth, some people interact with your tweet by just scrolling slower. <laughs> and that's like that's hard true. to realize, but like yeah. sometimes they'll that's the most every, you're going to get. Everything but like in your tweet and everything. And you know, like when interaction is, I guess. So you have to like, if you, yeah, so you have to kind of build that without needing to engage, like just by putting stuff out. And I don't know, like I've definitely been reserved over the last few months just like because. 
it's like hard it's really difficult and stressful to build up some kind of image of yourself when you're not even sure of yourself because you're 20 living at your parents like i don't know who i am i don't know what i want to put out like i I know i like ghouls and i have fun drawing them and it's a collection i want to keep building on so like that's what i've been focused on and like one a week is really not that big a deal like like cliff in the stands doing one a day and that shit was crazy and also like when you're in school they expect several assignments per week so it's just kind of yeah i don't know pacing myself i guess it's like working at a healthy at a healthy pace like it's like guaranteed like if it's like you know do like do like fucking like you know 20 a week or something like that that's when it becomes a job and that's that's no fun right the quality is gonna suffer you're gonna suffer and just, right. sorry boiling back to bouncing back to what she said it's just like the cool that like how the ghouls are kind of encapsulating that like so, and it's hard to do that when when like what 280 characters are on a tweet you can't you right. can't really convey that without some sort of extended collection or sense of uh kind of introduce it without these long ass threads and shit. but like Right. So I think it's like it's really cool just to kind of like get this glimpse inside your mind like, with with the ghouls because right? it checks all the boxes. I appreciate that, and I like I hope that um you know I I am able to communicate just you know honesty through it and just genuine interest because it really has become a passion project. And so with the things I do in the future, like I mentioned, the short film, and I definitely have other stuff on the list. Like I hope I can explore different parts of my my own little self <laughs> publicly and yeah. and I and I kind of get that here and there with the ghouls already just from their own different personalities so that has definitely kept it fresh for me um, but can we get into some more hot topics because uh, I got one off the top like that just came let's to mind let's get into it let's get into it all right so I want to talk about life and liberty. no I don't know I just want to talk about like intent and like being like putting yourself in your work and being like using your collection for expression rather than just for having more stuff out there you know yeah i think that's definitely i think we're kind of in agreement with that i feel like there is should definitely be solid in between the collections that you're putting out and the pieces that you're making i would like let's let's hear your thought about thoughts about this before we go uh yeah we go pvp mode okay so this is um with respect to the space but obviously like i respect like i'm seeing everyone in this space i love you guys and love what you're doing and i i'm not saying this to divide us i'm just saying this as a personal expression of my distaste for what has irked me um but i just see like so many traits but no voice like you know what i'm saying like where when it's like (sighs) I just wrote down like expressionless see, collection of like there's looks, tons of stuff on it, but what is it? It looks inherently boring. Like there's mm. just something about it that just looks just fuck this. Like it just like kind of annoys you when you're looking at it. I think like for me, and I might I'm, mutinate that was under that. Mutinates. I mm. do not yeah. like I do not like the way they look. I understand like the, from a business perspective, I think they're they're great. They're all that fun stuff. But I am not I get that. I, I think I, I, I think you touched it. on something interesting. Like they're an interesting expression, like continuation of the apes. Sure, I'll give them. Like it's it's like an attempt for it, but like yeah. visually, they're like they're they're kind of like if Jackson Pollock kind of tried to give it a go. You know, like you don't really know what's Jackson going Pollock. on in it. It's but anyways, um, one thing I did want to get into that was a little bit more positive is just like how these things and my distapes for them is because they just kind of create more of them like they they set trends and they they inspire people to reach for the same things and i just i don't know i've been thinking a lot about trends and how we can affect it because if you think about it like it really was just one big major collector that created the renaissance like the freaking church <laughs> and the cosomo yeah, Co- whatever the guy's name is that now is also the role playing crypto punk guy oh, but like i like it doesn't take that many people it doesn't take that many people really it just takes like intent and it takes just us trying to explore like the core of our experience i don't even know i'm not trying to say ghouls is deep and it really isn't because it's really just lowbrow but i'm saying like as a whole if we just pursue like what we are personally passionate about it will do a lot more for the greater good i we need to start using more greater good by the way but i think it'll do more for the greater good than if we're all just kind of like reiterating one another like yeah a hundred percent like i definitely i definitely agree with you on that i think uh, trends they are 
almost interesting. Detriment. They're interesting, but in a grander scheme of things, like for expression and Otherwise, I do think that they're a little bit detrimental because then you have people less inclined to, you know, push the boundaries and go step outside the comfort zones um, if they already have like a formula in front of them about what it means to succeed. Right, right. And I think, you know, it's like add a positive twist to this and also acknowledge the boundary pushing people in this space. Like we do that from, I was thinking about this earlier, like, like we push boundaries from within. Like when we, we become a, like, a, a, you know, we reduce down to a core where people can understand and then we create these innovative moves. And like, I see this through the goobers in how they are displayed and how the airdrops function, how the names are able to be personalized and how it doesn't have a background. So on, on cyber, it just stands like a 3D character. It's interesting. Like it's innovative. And I, I don't know. I, I just... I just want to see more of it. I just, I just no, want I feel to see you. more I, of it. I one hundred percent feel you. It's, I like, just feel like wasted potential like, a little bit. Oh, it definitely, I, like in my no, it definitely kind of, in my opinion, raised the bar on what to expect from uh, some of these collections. Because like you look at a goo and you look at a ghoul, you look at and maybe an addition of a purple rat or something, and you see one that it just says, "Give me more." Right, and the addition of the purple rat is an interesting point because just the idea of creating additions around what is really intentional and thoughtful, like like windows into a piece, like with moments that are created for the purple rat, like it, by creating an addition, it allows it to have a more collectible feel. So even if it's low quantity, people can bond over that. And like, I just think I as much as I think about this all, like I hate that I have to think about this all, bro. Like it sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's the it's the clap part out loud again. Like it really does make you make you think. But after a while, it's like I just wanna, exactly. I just want to do. My brain off, right? I just right. I just want to do, do, and it, I feel like that's how ghouls really did come about. Because like when it clicked, and I saw that, and I was like, oh, I like this thing. I want more of them. I was like, cool. I'll just dedicate to this now, and like it kind of works. Like just gotta do, I guess, and and improvise along the way. Uh, you just. Got to start trying and then figure out like, okay, does this is this working? Okay, right, is this not working? Yeah, right. right. I think um, I think like that's one of the kind of oh my god, I'm blue sky. That's such a game. Just like again, I uh, just actually going back to what you said before about um talking about like purple rat and like like making it like a larger world that gives it really it's like really thoughtful but then really well planned out but also kind of collectible it really does make you think about like the whole like collectible aspect of this entire space that we're right right and, like right. it really like it really is interesting to see like how the dynamics of everything like that kind of plays out in each interaction right 100 percent. like it's as much about creating appealing work as it is as showing people that it's appealing work and being like this is a... but like not also forcing it down people's throat it's an interesting dance bat like balance type of ritualistic it's a really conundrum fine line because you like you can really tell when something is being force fed to you and right. it is so unappealing um it... i i just mm -hmm. yeah um i don't know i don't know what to go off on here like i feel like we can maybe i don't know um I think like one thing to mention is like we're all kind of going for similar things here like we all want to like like to say like oh my art like my ghouls are worthwhile because I put so much thought and care into them is kind of meaningless because if you're really actually passionate about your work like that should just be baseline what's applicable to us all yeah. but it's like creating that certain chord that then gives like a more reason to appeal i don't know man i'm still figuring it's this like out the, it's <laughs> like it, being able to create something that, that kind of like checks all the boxes for other people without force feeding it to them and being like this is why it should check all like this is why um i put so much instead of just going like um i put so much time and effort because at this point that should be expected like not from, right. not from you per se but i just mean like passion projects like if you are just expect you to treat it like it's important right but i think uh I think of being able just to like what she did is like really kind of um, it checks all the boxes without being like horse fed and it hits the nostalgia factor and everything of it just so perfect. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I'm excited to expand on it and it gives me just like um, a lot of just 
like hope for my future self in terms of like how open ended ghouls is like I could really do some kind of journal dissection guide to it or like ma- try to make some kind of indie game around it or just release little YouTube skits like it doesn't matter but like it's just kind of building blocks it feels like and it feels like building mm-hmm. blocks I can like proudly equip myself with and I think that's kind of like something I was lacking in the past and trying to reach for definitely because it's really hard to well like as an artist just like build like one piece off each other like repeatedly as we were saying before about like right. making it. but right now you actually have like pieces it's just about just getting them all to fit together and you take them apart put them back together and it's a new thing i'm just mm-hmm. gonna say it say it off right? i want to see ghouls trading cards ghouls trading cards could be cool ghouls trading ghouls. cards with ar where like you know you point the camera and you can new see par- a little ghoul parallel sweating Parallel, parallel is in my DMs just telling me to be quiet about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't mean to, yeah, compete in this trying market right now. Uh, but ghouls incoming. Um, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to stick. I feel weird because, like, okay, so I love ghouls. And I am very passionate, but like at the end of the day, when I die, I'm probably not gonna put ghouls in my tombstone. You know, it's probably not gonna actually like. But it's mm. like a big part of who I am now, so it's gonna be interesting to look back on and be like nostalgic about it, as well as like. I don't know. Just see where it leads it's, it's into a part, It's a part of your. It's a part of your journey, but it doesn't necessarily right. always do everything that you, everything that you are and you. Right, like when. Thing. Right, when I'm at Sotheby's, I'm not gonna throw up a ghoul's piece. Probably, like I'll probably <laughs> try to be a little more personal, yeah. kind of thing. You know, I'm just saying, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I love ghouls, but it's it's interesting. Like, in as subtle bubble, I want it to be like a collection of collections. So, it it really does feel like the the first one of just different ones i guess that mm-hmm. will still come but uh were yeah. you interested in all the, if if you got some time and everything uh you feel comfortable just speaking on some of your personal work and stuff because like that i think yeah. that was initially what i i think i found sometime last year yeah man. and I'm what, what do you say what would you say like some of your biggest inspirations behind it are i don't know if joe if we can get pin a couple up that mm, that's, a, that's a hard question but i'm gonna it, gladly get into it i'll put up some pictures too of like my what i think are more significant personal pieces Oh, about uh, okay, cool. Off the cut, like just first off, like definitely free will and destiny, uh, which I just threw up, collected by Cliff. Shout out Cliff. Uh, that piece is was the first piece I ever publicly showed at a, an art show. It was the first piece that I freaking took to my cousin's coffee shop and hung it up there. It was physical that was turned digital, um, and it's meant a lot to me like uh, throughout the years because it was initially made in 2019 while I was in school, and then. 2020, I was trying to get around with prints. 2021, I was like, you know what? I'm going to throw this up as a print. Wait, no, 2020, I was like, yeah, I'm going to throw it up as a print. So I spent like a whole, like 27 hours digitizing this piece and then uh, tried to throw it up on imprint. Yeah, I like, I was trying to like, I was trying to make sure that it was going to be a nice print as soon as it came out. Cause like it was a scan of a physical. So I didn't want it to like, just look rough and like marker. So I like re digitized it entirely, like really started from the bottom up and sold zero prints of it. And I was just Yo. like, damn, y'all suck. Like y'all are haters. No, it was, it was kind of sucked. But then, you know, crypto art came along whole two years later, like it sold and I don't even give a fuck. Like people can eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, no i'm just kidding I i'm just like, kidding i didn't know any of you at that time so that's not direct i'm gonna take account of that personally oh like, th- please that in- <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh yeah so that's definitely a major piece another major piece from around that same time is this one a winding stop which is literally the same story dot or dot like point for point whatever you want to call it like bullet for bullet like digitized it i spent less time it wasn't 27 on this one it was like just 23 i think but still just and still no, no well just yeah 23. man when you spend four months on pieces at times like it's okay to say just 23 hours <laughs> <laughs> yeah, zoom um, out, I guess, right? yeah zoom out for sure um but that one is yet to sell. That one is my genesis on foundation. And it, since it like has been on the market for over a year now, I ended up raising this reserve for plus one ETH. Initially, it was 0.404 and, you know, like bid not found. But bid was truly not found. So I raised the floor because, you know, fuck it. I've done you shit. Know, and you, I've just gotta, yeah, you, you just got to you just got to find your own. Uh, just a matter of uh, finding the right person to get their eyes on it, right? Right, right. Eventually it'll get there. And I think that if I were to sell it at 0.404 now, I would feel cheated out of it for like how significant of a piece it is for me. So like, I feel like it makes sense to raise the floor. I'm not 
I'm not going to stress about waiting another year if I need to or more. It's cool. Um, yeah. But besides that, I – so, like, we talked about me exploring different styles. One of the major ones that I've bounced between is my abstractions. And a big, big – like, you asked me what inspired me. So, like any kid, I drew as a kid. But when I moved from Brazil to America in the fourth grade, I – could not communicate so i drew even more and that is how i like i just began to cope and through that coping mechanism i started gaining friends by just sharing silly images and uh building the natural kind of hand-eye coordination required for it whatever you might call it and um i started to see like holy shit i kind of feel good when i make something good and my self-confidence started being attached to it so now i'm just drawing for the sake of being a better artist i really don't care about sale prices i care about like one-upping myself which i feel like i have been slowly and progressively doing so um and within that i explore the abstract world and i explore that from um so oh, i totally derailed from my story but um so yes i drew as a kid and uh, all that stuff but when i moved here and didn't know shit i started seeing my self-worth in it and i started seeing my drawings actually sucked and then I started just like being really just like down about it. And then I ran across this YouTube page called Peter Draws, which is like a super just mellow dude drawing abstractions. And I started kind of vibing out with his YouTube page. And I was like in eighth grade, seventh grade. And from then on, I just kind of took on this like side abstraction interest. And since then, it's kind of developed from purely abstract to like more figurative abstract. And I've explored it as well as in animation and I'm trying to find those to pin up, but my abstract world is kind of, um, I would describe it as like, uh, ex it explores depth and it's like volumetric while just being about line, um, like it's strictly lines, but anyways, just yeah. Seeing, seeing how they can, how they can kind of work together and all that. Yeah, how they can like work together to kind of like glitch out as, as if they were in front of one another or whatever, but. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I have fun with kind of bridging the two and I definitely have fun with just like bridging different styles together. So as I kind of find myself, I definitely want to incorporate more of it into my work. Um, but outside of it, definitely I would describe myself more as an illustrative person. So I mentioned I went to school. Um, I went to school for digital art and animation. So I graduated with a focus on 3D animation um, and mm -hmm. just in a thing on um, in a side thing on just digital art. So I kind of vary in the work I do but um I found through school that I actually really just prefer illustrative and painterly work um I took on oil painting during college and that was a lot of fun and I still do that um one of the it like things I kind of do fun. it is really fun it's so much fun videos. like it is so satisfying like right. one day the no it's one great day, top five appealing Right, like the fact that it doesn't just dry in an instant and clump up, <laughs> and like you can actually play around with it and push it around. Yeah, no, I love that shit. Um, no. But here's an example of like my my I guess abstract turning into figurative work. Um, I'm gonna throw up an example okay. of like an oil painting sketch real quick. Uh, nice. Not throw so up you you really got you really you're really experiencing pretty much uh, the vast majority like a really oh. wide uh, range of mediums i'm i would say i got some under my belt i won't say that i'm like the best at any of them but it's like you know i just kind of bridged it's between familiar. them and yeah, i'm definitely familiar with oils and uh, acrylic and also gouache and um i want to get into airbrushing that seems really fun but digital has definitely just been the the go-to for the recent time go figure here's some 3d <laughs> um it's really, uh, it's really fun. Just like I've, I've it's just like seeing like what part of you each, uh, what different parts of you that each medium kind of brings out. Mm. Personally, when I using this medium, it's almost like to quote unquote solve a problem or something. So now you know different mediums, you know different problems we solve kind of thing. Does that make sense? That, no, that's real as shit. Uh, that's real as shit because um, <laughs> art really is millions of micro decisions being done per minute. If you think about it, it's like, how long are you going to pull that stroke for? How hard are you pressing down? What color is that stroke? And what like angle is the brush at? And all these little micro 
decisions because of like how you want to hold your pencil because of if feeling comfortable for you is what's going to shape up your image so uh, the medium that you're working with is going to change it like I've done clay sculptures and that shit just like is different because like the it's way I design hard. is hard like I don't know it's just I'm not as familiar with it either so it's just definitely like your level of comfort with the medium and understanding of it as well as like what do you even want to accomplish with it like play a part into how you're going to approach it and I think like what you say definitely ring the bell or like ring definitely has truth to it because ultimately the medium should be whatever best carries out your concept so I think for me like being uh between all these different styles and mediums and everything like it benefits me because i'm not restricted to only drawing cartoons when i want to express myself more personally and deeply like i can bring out that realism or i can bring out the abstraction and um yeah i, I don't know it's no it's, it's definitely something i want to explore more it's really uh i really like what you said there like just like your whole uh kind of take on that like the whole micro transaction i don't know why i said that the micro decision. Decision, yeah <laughs> i got capitalism on the brain my fault damn um, no, you're good uh what we were, I think we were talking about before was intent um like intent is fucking huge when you want to boil boil something down like that because whatever you're trying to express whatever you're trying to convey um it's and like in certain mediums if you, if you fuck up that is that is not an easy fix mm-hmm. so I, I just really uh really kind of resonated with that for sure i mean art is you know uh People can probably tell within the first second of looking at your piece if they like it or not, because it's just kind of guttural yes. like reaction to yes. what you see in front of you. So if the tone of the piece or if the style doesn't align with how they would, you know, picture it, yeah. then it's kind of, yeah, it's okay. going to throw them off. They're not going to be able to believe in it and like everything. I threw in a little kid picture of me because I just ran into it and uh, you can oh see that got, I'm, got, I'm a real artist. Bubble. Look at that. Well, now he's an artist. <laughs> bubble before, bubble before, the pre-evolution bubble. I that's it. bubble before English, bro. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's literally the origin story bubble. Literally origin story bubble. Um, oh my god, crazy. Uh, I think we are also talking about a uh, kind of like combining mediums and stuff briefly. Yeah. What is your dream collab? Like, what is something you want to see or make happen before the end of your days? Hmm. Um, man, that's a great one. Uh, because, okay, does it, like, when you ask hey, can that, I do, can I do does it be project focused? Or, or, oh, anything, sorry. anything. Okay, it can okay. be, like, you and someone, or two different brains, or two different artists, whatever. Yeah, so I would say that my dream collab is more project-oriented in terms of it being something visual as well as something musical. I would love to work on some kind of short film, which also has, like, a tour quality to it where we could go out and like vibe out some music from the, the the short that is also like visuals to the show kind of thing so off the off the bat like i would love to collab with someone like jack stauber on on music and visuals and something goofy but also just fun and um it would be cool to just see what kind of show we could create i would love to put on concerts as well as movies and shit so um that would be huge and <laughs> that's probably my dream is actually like put on full-on kind of like retreat where it has music and movie festival slash gaming room type of vibes you know so i don't know who wants to make that like a real thing but whoever wants to make that a real thing i guess tyler wants to put me on for camp flog though i'll take i'll do something crazy i mean come on i think if we all send i can drink bigger at the same time oh that'll work you know what you know what celebrities love so oh, right games, right you know? yeah and they Just, always check their mm-hmm. dams before sleep mm-hmm. and Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, just they're really worried about the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm personally, I'm still, I'm, just, I'd be stoked to see a bubble short film. I am, I definitely think the world needs that. Needs uh, no, the bubble show is gonna happen. Hmm? Bro, the bubble show is gonna happen. The bubble, the bubble festival, bubble, bubble fest, <laughs> bubble fest. Yo, oh, yo, I am I there. Want, I want that. Uh, but for real, like, I don't know, I have been struggling recently with just kind of like seeing myself in the space but more and more I've been trying to like kind of hype myself up on the fact that I kind of could play a key role in this whole fucking movement by just simply being Brazilian American just from the powerhouses that are in Brazil like if I can serve as a translator I would be so gladly because like I always offer like help with 
descriptions and whatever like just translating stuff for my brazilian friends but like i want to like be some kind of helper and bringing them over for nft nyc and shit like imagine that would be, be huge. that would be nice because like i don't know what they what they put in the water over there or something but like it's crap some crazy <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not getting canceled i'm not saying i'm avoiding that what? uh i, no, I just cracked. <laughs> oh yeah, never mind. I thought you said like something about crack. I'm just like I am not. Oh, no, no, no. I, no, no, no. I, 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 I got too much respect for them. No, yeah, no. Uh, I... No, um, like because like some of the biggest na- like biggest names even in the NFT space, but that aside, like the art space in general, like Brazilians got the game on lock. A hundred percent, and I'm excited. Like I've been taking more pride in that, like in in that side of my my life. Because to get deep into like Victor Perez lore, um, I. I feel like one of the, the bubble philosophies that I've also attached to myself is just that I kind of feel like that, like a bubble. Like I just float around. I don't really feel like I have roots. I've went to three different high schools, moved around to four different states and two different countries. Like I don't know where my home is. So when people ask like where I'm from, I just say I was born in America, but my first memories are in Brazil. And I think like as I create these connections, it allows for me to build home outside of home and um i don't know i always expect to leave like my even my therapist one time like described me as a bubble floating around and they didn't even know about my art page i was just like shocked and i actually even brought it up like i actually go by bubble and they're like oh well you need to tether yourself down to something (laughs) i was like fuck bro like okay i get it i can't just keep escaping but like i feel like as a bubble who naturally floats around and perhaps you know intrigues a couple people with whimsical drawings and ghouls um and it, i can serve as a kind of a new thing yeah i don't know i i just hope i can serve to like connect a little bit more and also find my my places to connect but it's been beautiful connecting with burrito dal i love you guys so much and the fact that we get to play games and shit is wild to me um in the best way possible i'm just glad that we're like <laughs> on a level where you can just fool around like that it means a lot um and I don't know, I'm just like kind of finding my way around not only the NFT space, but just what I want to do with my life.